Good evening, everyone. My name is Janet Forrest. I am one of the adult program coordinators at the Nantucket Athenaeum. And I am excited tonight to have Suzanne Keating, who is an astrologist, astrologer. <laughs> um, and uh, she's going to be, I'm going to pass it right over to her uh, and she will introduce herself. Thanks for being here. Hi, everybody. Um, as I so rudely interrupted Janet, I'm an astrologer. I don't know where the term astrologist came from, but no astrologers I know re <coughs> refer to themselves as astrologists. <laughs> anyway, thank you for um, attending. This talk is titled, What's Going On? It's, a, uh, it's an astrological approach to finding answers, kind of a general um, how to use astrology approach. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Some of you um, actually may know me through my logo. Um, excuse me one second, Janet, it won't let me go forward or back now. Oh, um, let's see. It was try working a minute ago. Slide. I'm sorry? Just try clicking on the slide. Nothing, hmm. oh, there it oh. goes. Okay, all right, so hopefully, Let's see if it'll go back. Mm -hmm. All right, for whatever reason, it's working now. So <laughs> this um, banner, <laughs> Pathways of the Soul, may be familiar to people who have seen my blog. I do um, pathwaysofthesoul.blogspot.com. I've been writing it for 12 years. And um, mostly it's on the new and the full moon. Mm. And um, sometimes I, I used to write about other topics. I have not in the last several years, I need, I'm need. i incorporating that more into my personal or uh, newsletter through Pathways. And people who are clients or who sign up um, for their, you know, through their email, they get the newsletter in their um, inbox. It usually just once a month, but sometimes when there's a lot going on, I might uh, post something uh, special like uh, Jupiter squaring Neptune or something and and then talk about that so at any rate this is what the my business cards and my banner look like um, I'm going to just go back here for a second and say to you that I've been studying astrology for over 30 years closer to 35 and the reason is that I wanted some answers at one point in my life and I discovered a book called, called Astrology, the Cosmic Science by Isabel Hickey. And I read her book and I got very intrigued because it explained a lot of things to me about myself, or it, let's say it validated a lot of things. So I ended up uh, teaching myself astrology through Isabel Hickey's book. Then I started reading other books by... Um, famous astrologers in this country, mostly, and uh, Stephen Forrest, Robert Hand, Alan Oaken, and I've continued to study all these years later. I do a lot of um, webinars. I go to conferences when we can travel. It's supposed to be a conference in uh, Boulder, Colorado, uh, Denver this summer that was canceled from last summer at the end of August, I'm hoping to go and um, which would be great. My daughter just moved there. And um, <clears throat> at any rate, the astrology that I practice is natal astrology. It is um, more humanistic and soul centered than psychological. Although I started out doing psychological uh, astrology approach. Now, let me um, get over here and show you this quote here by um, Carl Gustav Jung um, says, we are born at a given moment in a given place. And like vintage years of wine, we have the qualities of the year and the season of which we were born. Astrology does not lay claim to anything more. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with Carl Jung, but he um, was a very world-renowned psychologist who also worked with <laughs> astrology charts. He um, did use astrology in his therapeutic sessions with clients. And I hear that there is a big uh, horoscope out on his patio 
in Switzerland. Someday I hope <laughs> to see it. <laughs> so it so what I I just um, want you to know that astrology has a very long history of um, working, you know, doing horoscopes, uh, not just for people and individuals, but back in the um, days of the city states and, you know, in Ro the Rome, Romans and the Greeks had a lot of uh, astrologers. The leaders used the astrology for when to go to war, uh, when to, um, you know, invest in certain things. They used astrology a lot. Now, <clears throat> when I first learned, I had to cast the charts by hand. It, 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 it required an ephemeris, which showed where all the planets were in the sky, what sign, what degree on any given day um, for a hundred years. Um, and then you needed a book of longitudes and latitudes, depending on where the person was born. And then you also needed a time zone um, book and you had to correlate all that information and do the math and interpolate and, and then you could set up a chart. It was excruciating and it was very time consuming and I am very dyslexic. So I always had um, issues with the math. I'd have to double check it, triple check it. It would take me hours to set up a chart. And now, uh, get a birth information, time, date, and place of birth, and I can put it into my solar fire this, um, program, and I have a chart in a matter of seconds. So I'd rather spend my time interpreting charts than setting them up. So thankfully, I don't have to do that anymore. All right, so um, I wanted to give you that quote by Jung just because that's how I view astrology as a tool. You know, and that that it's helpful for people to understand the phase, the time of year, what and everything else about when they were born. And the so I like to think of it as a navigational tool. And the horoscope is personal. It's a personal roadmap. And it depends on your time, date, and place of birth. Now, somebody else could be born at the same minute in the same hospital on the same day. They're going to be what you call an astrological twin. Or you could be like me and have a real twin. And my twin is born a minute after me. The Why are personalities different? Why do people make different choices? Because even though you have this roadmap, even though you have this um, sort of um, plan that your soul set up for you before you came here and incarnated, um, you have free will once you hear how you're going to follow that map. You might take a detour, you might get lost, you get back on track, and then something triggers you and you go back going down the path. You're going to learn what you're supposed to learn anyway. You're going to either learn it with ease or difficulty. It depends on different things that are going on. So I feel that astrology as a tool, um, it, it helps you know the cosmic weather ahead. So it's a weather forecast. So let's say knowing that um, the sun right now is moving through Aries, Aries is the sign of new beginnings. And so planning for new starts during Aries rather than during Pisces, which is more about reflection and endings. This, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, the transits um, to your natal chart allows you to make choices and inform choices. And that's why I do astrology to help people. These are two pictures I took out on the links a couple of summers ago. And I just like how the bow of the boat is pointing, you know, into the sunset. It was a beautiful sunset that night. And that's how I think of the, the chart. And the astrologer's job is to help interpret that for the, for the client. Now, uh, what can astrology do for me? That's, you know, I get that from people. Some people who um, 
don't really believe in astrology or they say, I, you know, I believe, but, or I use it, but I don't understand it. Or, you know, um, you know, tell me why I should use astrology. So I came up with these four, you know, ideas that, that I think are why I do astrology. It helps people to understand themselves better. And it also helps them to understand others, especially the people they're closest to, whether it's, you know, mother, father, siblings, um, significant others, uh, bosses, coworkers, Every person other than the self is another part is other. And you have relationships with all of those people. Now, accepting that one person's uh, sun sign is water and they're gonna be more emotionally driven, especially if they have other planets in water in the chart um, that could add to that. And somebody else's is in air say a Libra and a Cancer, the Libra is more thinking about how to achieve the balance and they're interacting and they want things to be nice for everybody. And they are more logical and more reasoning and they don't understand, <coughs> excuse me. why a cancer would be so emotional. Cancers are, you know, uh, water driven. So just knowing that two people have sun signs in different um, elements and different modalities even can help uh, to people to understand each other better. I think it's something that should be taught in school actually. It used to be back in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, pre, I want to say in the time of Babylonia, you know, Western astrology stems from Babylonia. And um, there are many, many texts that have been translated from the Greeks and the Romans that show just how extensive the use of astrology was. Astrology and astronomy were hand in hand, cousins. <laughs> Alexander you know. the Great would not leave on a campaign if the moon wasn't right like it guided right. he was one of the greatest conquerors in the history of humankind whether that's good or bad is not yep. up for debate but you know he literally would stay put for 28 days if that's what the moon told him he should do yeah so it's a it's um it's a good um tool for being successful in your endeavor your campaign whatever it is all right, so what else is astrology? Um, what, what else can it do for you? It can help validate the way you feel about your life. And um, that is what I find one of the biggest things when I do readings for people, especially younger people, they say, wait, how can you know me so well? You know, and they, and they just feel validated because the astrology is, part of them they know it already but to have someone um you know tap into it to say that this is um you know this is how this energy expresses through your chart and they're sitting there shaking their head yep yep you know <clears throat> that's very important reason for using astrology i think it also helps you find the right tools um, within yourself so you can be successful. So whether it's business or you want a successful relationship, it's, um, it's something you can have in your, in your tool chest to pick up and use. And um, I, I, that's another reason why I think astrology is gaining in popularity right now again, because it's um, another way of getting answers. It's another way of looking at things. All right, let's look at what doesn't astrology do, all right? Astrology doesn't tell you what to do. You do that. You make your decisions. Doesn't tell you who to marry. That's your choice. It doesn't make judgments or say what is good or bad. It just is. I cannot tell you the number of times that people have said to me, oh, I heard that my sign is the worst sign. And I say, what do you mean the worst? 
well, you know, Scorpio, it's so, you know, it's a horrible sign. And I'm like, no, it's not, you, you, you know, it might be intense, but it isn't a bad sign. It just is the way it is. So that's another thing about astrology. It's not, it will point out when things are in a helping uh, aspect or a good sign for, you know, uh, starting a business. But if it's not a supportive sign for starting the business, they'll say, you know, the astrology will tell you, wait until this moves in, you know, in six months, that kind of thing. Now, astrology also doesn't make things happen. Um, the, there was an old radio station in Boston and one of, the, one of the lines that they said was the stars impel, they do not compel. And basically what the, um, it was the cosmic muffin and the man, I've forgotten his name. I knew his name for years, but he passed away probably 10 years ago now, at least. Um, but, you know, this idea of, the, of uh, Mars is going to make you do something. No, it isn't. Mars is an energy. Things happen energetically. You decide what to do about them. This is another thing I, I ought to have said at the beginning is that I believe that astrology works because everything is vibrational. Um, numbers, names, uh, symbols, everything it resonates to a certain vibration. The, they call astrology the music of the spheres. There is a correlation to something in ancient wisdom called the rays. And it's, I've spent the last year in COVID studying esoteric astrology and the rays. And so I have a deeper understanding now on a spiritual level, more soul-centered level, let's say, not spiritual, more soul-centered of what the soul's purpose in this lifetime is all about. So I overlay that over the chart now when I'm looking at it. I don't have to tell the person I'm doing it, but it's, it helps me to see deep, more deeply what their uh, position is here and what they're about and what they're trying to do. Um, all right, let's go on. So love this little uh, image of the of the planets just set up to just knock it back and forth. You know, I, I put on here, how would the planets align for you? Because I'm not sure how people envision the planets and how they think the planets can have any effect on us down here on Earth. There's a saying, as above, so below, as within, so without. Everything is vibrational energy, and um, it's going to reflect on the individual based on their time of birth and their date of birth and their place of birth. So of course the planets don't line up in a row. Um, now, but Suzanne, I, yes. I, I know I've asked you this before and I need to hear everything again because now it's different, but um, what if someone can't find out their time of birth? Uh, good question. I usually- um, Like adopting uh, kids or, you know, like- Right, so the way I deal with that, there's two things that you can do. There's something called chart rectification and I'm going to open up the window here because I feel funny with only so few of us and not seeing you and I've lost my cursor. Okay, now I can see you. Um, so the chart rectification is a very um, a detailed um, process of asking questions about major events in a person's life, when they got married, when a parent died, uh, if they had major accidents or that, and then piecemealing it to come back and find the sign that was rising on the ascendant when the person was born. I never learned how to do that. I have always worked um, with a pendulum. I douse things with a pendulum, and I learned it through uh, hands of light a long time ago doing healing work and, and dowsing the chakras. And I learned to use it for um, uh, finding places on a map or, you know, that you can use it in any way. You can use a pendulum for dowsing, whatever you want to know. And we know dowsers find water, you know, so there's an, a, a pull. When so I learned to work with my own body's energy to find out what my yes and no was. And so I'll douse the time of the 24 hours of the day. 
and break it down. And, and I have to be in a, you know, meditative state to do that and um, not be interrupted because it does take a while, although it doesn't take me as long as it used to because I've been dowsing now for, I don't know, 35 years. And so um, the thing that I like to do is find out if there's a family story, you know, or if the mother says you were born sometime after midnight, but I, you know, I don't remember what time. And, and so even just in adopted people, I have had done readings for people who were adopted. I, a couple of times, I didn't know they were adopted. So when I was looking at the parents' influence in the chart, and this one lady was sitting there, and I remember tears were just coming down her face. And I said, I'm sorry, I did. Am I upsetting you? And she said, I didn't know my real parents. And you're obviously talking about my real parents. And I said, oh, you were adopted. And she said, yes. And I said, how, you know, how sure are you, you know, I'd, before I begin, I usually make sure I've got the right time or close to it. Another time a, a woman had a chart, asked for a reading and she told me she was adopted and she wasn't born in this country. And uh, so I did what, based on where she told me she was born and, the, and her birthday and and does that and we did the reading and you know she agreed with a lot of the things that were um that she could relate to and then but i don't know several months later she got back to me and said i i wasn't born that day i was born the next day <laughs> i'm like well I went off of what you said and so we need you know either you need to have another reading or you know um whatever so at any rate that that i don't know if that answers your question i don't do chart rectification there are astrologers who do i could refer you to them um i just um my biological mother says my birth date is a day after what my birth certificate says and okay I, 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 like you would think the birth certificate was accurate but you would also think my biological mother was there Yep. Well, so I'm not really sure how to. Well, then, then you would that would be not as hard to um, deal with as you think it is. For um, you, the astrologer would ask you a lot of questions, and um, depending on you know how much had changed or not changed, it could be figured out. It's a form of rectification, you know, to find out the ch the chances of the time being exact. Um, being born in a hospital or even you know they're not looking at the clock right away they're no, you know that. i get that she and just, then they she yeah a day later than yep. my birth certificate says and i'm well, like well, what does that mean yeah does that answer your question though you can yes yes okay. there's a way to figure out there is a way to figure it out aligned with the planets no matter what anybody says exactly okay. yeah Good. all right so I'm going to move on to the next slide here. So these are some of the questions. And since this is being recorded, I know they can they have the, the um, questions that you're asking. Um, and um, but I'll read this what uh, what is on the screen here. So these are a lot of questions, typical questions I get. Um, I was born in the cusp of Taurus and Gemini. Which one am I? I've had people say, oh, I'm not, I'm not a Gemini. I don't talk that much. No, I am a Taurus. I, you know, and then they go on and on to explain it. And I'm thinking they're speaking Gemini, you know, <laughs> but I say the only way to tell that is to use the, um, the computer and to get the, and to pop it in. You, you could, the sun moves into a sign on a day. You don't know if it's going in at 5.30 in the morning or 8.49 p.m. So if you could still have that birthday, but the sun might be leaving one sign and moving into another. So the only way to tell that is to um, pop the information into the, into the um, computer and see what it spits out. Um, can you tell me who I'm compatible with? Well, yes and no. You know, as long as I know your um, uh, sun sign, I can say what your sun is compatible with. But the sun is only one planet. 
So I don't know, you might be out, outgoing and the other person might be outgoing and that, and it might be both fire signs or a fire and an air compatible elements. That would be great. But then there are nine other planets. So the moon might not be compatible. Mercury, how you com communicate might not be compatible. Or Mercury might be very compatible and the, um, and the, um, the uh, sun might not be. So it just, it's a, it varies. All right, another typical question. When am I going to meet my soulmate? People ask me that a lot. That question is not my favorite question. Um, my, I think that we have more than one soulmate. I think soulmates can be friends, family, um, not just on a romantic partnership level. And um, so, and is there, is it possible to have more than one soulmate as for instance, a, you know, as a marriage partner? Yes, maybe some part, one partner dies or leaves or what, whatever. Could they meet another person that they feel that same or different, it's a different person, but they have that connection with that soul connection. Yes, soulmate is not my favorite term. <laughs> so I try to avoid, uh, avoid that. That's about uh, as bad as am I going to be rich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So am I going to be rich? That's There's another. So many definitions of rich. Well, so here's what I always say to people. Do you want to be rich? So I guess you're going to have to work hard, save your money, and then I guess you could be rich. And yes, it's something, can we look at how you make money and your attitude towards money in the chart? Yes, we can. All right. How can I figure out what my rising sign is and why is it even important? So rising sign depends on the time you were born. And all that means is what sign was coming up on the horizon at the time of your birth. And that has a lot to do. It has everything to do with your time data on the day you were born. Okay, another question I get, uh, people have stopped me on Main Street. Mercury's retrograde. <laughs> um, but this one, I was born during Mercury retrograde. Is that bad? You know, that's Mercury retrograde is such a negative uh, connotation. It means that the planet had slowed down and um, planets can't actually slow down or go in reverse, but because Mercury is so close to the sun, it goes retrograde three times a year, sometimes four. And from where further out and from the Earth's perspective, we see the um, Mercury going fast and we're going in one motion. And then all of a sudden it's as if we're passing Mercury or Mercury is going backwards. That's a retrograde motion. And it, for astrological purposes, it just means that we tend to need to go within more for um, our methods of communication. We tend to have to check in with ourselves, learn more. It's not good or bad. It's just the way we learn. And it's just how we operate in the world. Mercury retrograde can cause some reversals in communications, breakdown, delays, that kind of thing. But it, you know, once that's why with astrology, you can plan for things when you know, when you know where you stand. Okay, next slide here. So um, for people that don't know what the signs of the zodiac are and um, when, when they are in effect, you know, if some people know their birthday, but they don't know what sign they are. Roughly, Aries um, at the vernal equinox, it's on March 21st when the sun moves into Aries. That lasts uh, through April 21st. And then it continues like that through the year. So around the 21st of every month, the sun is moving into a new sign of the zodiac. And they always go in order. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Now, this um, coming uh, April 21st, the sun will already be in Taurus. It's moving into Taurus on the 20th, not the, not the 21st. That happens a lot. 
that so depending on something called the precession of the equinoxes, we can have a change in when the sun is moving to the equinoxes, the solstices, et cetera. Okay, so uh, do I need to stay on this for anybody any longer? Okay. Quick question. Or, yes. So I believe that I have, I have both my children cesarean because I had to. So I picked their birth dates, which was horribly confusing to me. But if I picked their birth dates, then that actually was meant to be, right? Like they're meant to be that sign or like- if uh, It doesn't matter if you pick it, it matters when they came, when they're okay. born. Great, perfect. So when, when they take the first breath is what their um, chart is based on. Perfect, that's so great. Had a lot, that's a good um, example of another question that people ask a lot. My mother was supposed to have me a week earlier. <laughs> and I'm like, well, do you want me to do a chart based on supposed to have, or do you want me to do a chart based on when you were born? So it's when I had them, period, end of story. Period. And, okay. Yep. 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 That's when, that's what we have to base it on. Okay. Now, these are the 10 planets. So we've got 12 signs, we have 10 planets. And the planets are the archetypal energies. And <clears throat> I'm just gonna run through all of these. The sun symbolizes our life force and our vitality, and we project it outward into the world. For instance, uh, Leo is a very strong sun sign because uh, it is ruled by the sun. That sign is ruled by the sun. And um, it is, has it's all it's a sign that's about strength and and about our life force so the sun representing our life force what sign it's in um tells us how we how we um use that energy but right here i'm not going to go into all the signs i'm going to just talk about the the um the 10 energies that we look at the moon is um more representative of our instinctual behavior our inner reflections, our path of least resistance. Whereas the sun goes out into life, the moon is how we're feeling, you know? And the moon also has to do with the public. It rules the ebb and flow. We know the moon is our uh, satellite, the satellite of the earth. And, you know, Jupiter has, used to have 56 moons. Now it has even more. And, you know, the moon's, um, orb is around the planet that they are connected with and for us it's the moon we have one moon and it goes and that's what gives us the seasons because the earth is tilted on its axis at 23 and a half degrees and and in relationship to the sun and the moon um, then we get the seasons the moon has no light of its own just when it shines from the light reflected from the sun so, then we have Mercury, which symbolizes communication, interactions, logic, and reasoning. It's all about how we interact. And usually um, it's, uh, it can be talking with our hands. It can be, and it, and, and it has a lot to do um, with um, move, things that move quickly, you know, and it, so it has to do with cars and where Mercury is, what sign it's in, um, will tell us how we communicate. Venus is about beauty, symbolizes beauty and love and money and values because um, money and love are what we value, you know, says what we value. It, Venus has the power of attraction, whereas Mars is outward energy, where we direct our energy outward. It's the um, action, desire, where we assert ourselves out in the world and what our drive is towards. So Venus is more about what we attract and what we value and Mars is more about what we go after. Uh, Jupiter symbolizes expansion, optimism, inclusivity and higher knowledge. It's, it's the largest planet in our solar system, and it has a lot to do with education and travel. Saying uh, there's always enough, more than enough. Whereas Saturn symbolizes restriction and constriction, responsibility, 
Saturn is all about focus and the power to manifest by our efforts. So Saturn pulls in and uses the resources that it has, whereas Jupiter is more expansive. And so, you know, I, uh, in my classes and with my clients, I'll jokingly call Jupiter cosmic Santa Claus and Saturn cosmic police. Because Jupiter says is more than enough for everybody and Saturn says, I'm sorry, your friend can't stay for dinner. We don't have enough. You know, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> Saturn, it says limits. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the planet Uranus symbolizes sudden change, ingenuity, inventiveness, um, individuality, and the unknown. It's the planet of surprises. It's the planet whose energy we don't have any control over. And it's one of the outer three transpersonal planets along with Neptune and Pluto. Um, all the planets from the sun out to Saturn can be seen with the naked eye. And it wasn't until Galileo invented the um, telescope that they could see Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So, and they were all discovered at different points. Um, Neptune symbolizes a lack of boundaries. It's formlessness, just things that go, you know, like with the fog, movies, film, that kind of thing. Uh, it has to do with our intuition and creativity. Neptune rules also things having to do with art and music. And then Pluto, who is downgraded from a planet to a dwarf planet um, by the um, Astronomical Association years ago. Um, but astrologists keep uh, putting him in the charts because we understand just how powerful Pluto is. <laughs> Pluto symbolizes death and, well, first decay, the breakdown of things, then death and then rebirth. So therefore it is the power of transformation and where we have Pluto in our chart um, is more important individually than what sign it's in because Pluto can stay in a sign anywhere from eight to 32 years, depending on what sign it is. Because Pluto had, He's slightly, he's not a completely round planet and slightly um, elliptical or egg shaped in some ways. It looks more round, but he's not a perfect sphere. And his, but his orbit is elliptical is what I'm trying to say, his orbit around the sun. So sometimes he's way, way, way out in space much further. And then other times as he's coming around the sun, he gets closer to the earth. And so it depends on how long he stays in the zodiac belt and what sign he, he's going for. So those are the, um, the signs. So now we take the planets and the signs and we put them into the horoscope. Horoscope comes from the Greek word aura, meaning of the hour, and scopus, observer. So these are the markers of the hour. And, and the um, words in uh, Latin are similar. Um, a natal horoscope is drawn up for the time, date, and place of a person's birth. Then the astrologer interprets the symbolism of the planets and signs in the houses of the chart and how they interact with one another. Um, let me show you an example here. Okay, so is anything blocking that chart or can you see it? No, we can see it great. Okay, um, I, I have the little bar with people on the side so it's blocking part of it and I didn't know if it was blocking for you. This is a horoscope chart, okay? So when we look at this, what are we looking at? The, uh, these are all glyphs. They're all um, symbols for what they represent. I don't know if my cursor, if you can see where I'm moving it up here. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. That's the sun. That's the glyph for the sun. This person was born with the sun in Leo. So we read it from the outside in. The planet, the sun, at 20 degrees of Leo and 47 minutes is in the 12th house. There are 12 houses, 12 pieces of pie here in this circle. And every, um, every section takes up 30 degrees in the sky. And we get um, a complete 360 degree circle. Now, this is just an example of what it looks like, okay? I was pretty tickled when I got this because I completely um, made this person up. 
this isn't even a real person. But when I saw the chart, I rather liked some of the configurations in here. And then I noticed some of how it, it hits my chart. And I was like, oh, that's cool. No wonder I did that. Um, but <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go back here. Um, horoscopes can also be drawn up for the start of anything new. A any new beginning can have a chart. So a mundane event such as the incorporation of a new city or a new government, uh, a new business, a marriage, there you can cast a chart for it. There are birth charts for everything. Then we also have um, horoscopes for, well, there are horoscopes take on different meaning based on the um, uh, what you're using it for. So in other words, natal charts are for people. Um, Suzanne. Question? Yeah, because I just, that just blew my fucking mind. So. Excuse me, this is being recorded. I'm sorry. For you the said, library. I'm sorry. You said that. A we birth, can cut it out. I'm sorry. Okay. Your birth chart, a birth chart. Uh-huh. Can be with the beginning of anything, not just a person not just a birth. A horoscope wouldn't be called birth chart. It, it, for mundane astrology, mundane having to do with the everyday yeah. would be a birth chart for a new business. Uh, the city was set up at such and such a date. That's how the, the, they knew when, uh, when to go to war or whatever based on different things you know, having to do with the King's chart and the incorporation of the city. So yes, yep, you can have a birth chart for just about anything. Yep. So there are different branches of astrology. There's evolutionary astrology, humanistic. Those are all about people. Those are about the individuals. Um, diff but they, they take a different approach. Whereas let's say uh, um, somebody who just does psych, um, psychological astrology they're still doing a natal chart a birth chart for a horoscope for the person but they're looking at it from a perspective simply more about the personality and the um, psychology of the person whereas evolutionary astrology would take into a, account a little more of the soul's path mundane astrology i just spoke about those are charts for um everyday life. Um, there's financial astrology is a huge branch of astrology. I know um, three um, financial astrologers who I listen to when I go to conferences. Um, I have the, their books. I'm frankly quite bored with financial astrology. It, it, it's like so many graphs and charts and everything else to figure it all out. I'd much rather talk to a person. People interest me more and I'd much rather do charts for them. Can I see financial um, expressions in the chart? Yes, I can. You know, what they're, you know, how they use their money or where they're blocked or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm not a financial astrologer and I will never uh, pretend to be. I would refer someone to a a financial astrologer if they want to talk about investing or that kind of thing. Now, um, medical astrology is another branch. Um, all the um, signs of the zodiac have to do, and, and I looked for a picture to bring this up and I couldn't find it, uh, different parts of the body. And um, so Aries rules the head, Taurus rules the throat, Gemini rules the lungs, the arms, and the hands, that kind of thing. And medical astrology goes much, much more in depth. I, it is something I started to study years ago. Um, I didn't continue with it. Horary astrology is another branch. It comes from the Greek word for of the hour, uh, like kind of like the horoscopes, but, it, but this is more uh, about the um, hour in the moment that the question is asked. In the question is the answer. And the way that works is an astrologer here's your question they write down the time and then they cast a chart or let's say you leave me an email and I the first time I read it and you have a question you want an answer to I have to look at what time it is when I'm reading the email or you leave me a voicemail I write down when it hit my ears when I'm hearing it that's when it becomes a real question to me to the astrologer so I'll cast a horary chart horaries are used for need to know basis only. 
not are the Red Sox going to win the World Series. That's not a need to know. And um, it's more like, can you help me find my lost wallet? Well, let's see. And I get a little information, da, 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 da. My daughter called me one time and asked me to help her find her boyfriend's wallet. And I cast a chart and I said, it's going to be hidden out of sight near where he was working and it's in the dark and it's in some dirt. And I don't think it's outside. I think it's inside and, and so you need to check out. And, and they went, he had a gig the night before. He's a drummer in a punk band and they went back and then my daughter remembered that there was, that I said in the dark hidden. And she noticed that the stage didn't quite hit the wall and they got a flashlight and looked between the stage and the wall and there was the wallet in the dirt. So sometimes it works really well. I have had other times where, no, I'm sorry, I can't find that wad of money that you lost, you know, you, you know, or your keys in your gym bag, kind of, you know, I, it's like, Sometimes it really works, and sometimes I don't have whatever reason the enough information, or I just can't figure it out. So, horary is very popular. Electional astrology an election is you elect a date for the best time to do something, those are typically um, for marriages, or um, I want to. Um, is this the best time for me to start a vacation? Is this the best time for me to um, buy a new car? You know, we pay, based on what the what it is the person wants to do. Then I will look at I will look at a lot of things um, and cast three or four charts based on that to find the best election chart for the person. Okay, moving on from there, um, I already showed you the chart. Um, this slide I need to get over here. What are, you know, so when we look at the horoscope here, I'll just go back again. There's a lot of pieces in there, right? A lot of moving parts. What do you call these parts? You know, how, and how do I understand it in English? And I, you know, I've had people come back and say, next year when you do my reading, could you please do it in English? I'd be like, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting better at that. But if I talk about something, I will say what it is, what it means. So if I say, for instance, Saturn, it, you're having your Saturn retrograde, they don't know what that means, but Saturn, what is that energy? So the planets or archetypes based on, you know, they've given their names based on mostly mythological archetypes, they are energies and the energies equals what is being activated. So when somebody says Saturn, what they're talking about is necessity, responsibility, career okay and the the um signs of the zodiac are how the energies express themselves in the different signs so your sun in um virgo is going to be it, it's an energy what's being activated the sun my vital life force in virgo it's going to be through doing um detailed work being in a service um field um uh, uh, really good at um, balancing the books for my boss or, you know, something like that. That's how the sign it's in it shows how the energy expresses itself through different signs. And then the third part of the horoscope to consider is the houses of the horoscope. So those are the little um, wedges of pie you see around the wheel, um, one through 12. And those houses are where in your life you work out those energies. For instance, in this case, I'm looking here in the fifth house, there's three planets down here in the fifth house, Neptune, Uranus, and Jupiter. This fifth house is the house of children, creativity, uh, leisure time, love affairs, uh, anything I express of myself, whether I write a book or play or, you know, and how I enjoy myself. So that, that area becomes very important because there's a stellium in there. And then the last um, piece of this uh, puzzle of how to read a horoscope are the aspects. The aspects tell why, why some planets have more ease or difficulty when interacting with each other in the chart. 
And you can see here in the center of this wheel, there's a lot going on. There's red lines and blue lines and broken up, you know, blue lines and broken up green lines. They all have to do with aspects. Aspects are why some planets get along better with each other. Blue lines are typically um, harmonious. So here's the sun at 20 degrees of Leo. It's in a harmonious trine to Saturn at 20 Aries. And then they're trining uh, the moon down here at 14 Sagittarius. This is what we call a grand fire trine. So and I don't want to get into teaching you all that. I just want to show you that, that those are harmonious aspects. Whereas this red, big red square going all the way around here, connecting all these things, especially something called a T-square here, it's like doubled up or tripled up with these planets. The, the moon squaring Mercury, it, this person would be feel more free to go out in the world and explore and learn, but their Virgo, their Mercury communication in Virgo wants the details. And yet the, the moon in Sagittarius wants to head out the door. And so they have this inner conflict. And that tells why. That's the other part. The aspects tell why. Why is this more difficult for me? You know, that kind of thing. All right. Now, going on here, moving this over. So um, does your natal chart ever change? No. The natal chart is your birth chart. It represents your birth chart. It's your roadmap. It's what, uh, what will always be referred back to when looking at the current transits and progressions in the sky. Now, what do I mean by transits and progressions? Progressed planets are your birth planets progressed ahead or moved ahead a day for a year. A day equals a year. So let's say a person's 51 years old then I would move the, the sun and all the planets ahead 51 days in the ephemeris. I used to go through by hand. You can still do it by hand and go through the book and find it. 51 days after the person was born, where did all these planets move to? That shows me where you're coming from now, what phase of life you're in, what you're ready for. This is more concerned with inner growth than what's being offered to you out in the world. So that's the progressed um, uh, planets. And I cast a chart for those progressions. They move, they have to have, those aspects have to be very, very exact. So they're not as busy as um, a natal chart or a transit of a chart. Now transits show where the planets are in the sky currently. When they're put against your natal chart or your progress chart, they will show how they interact with those personal planets in your chart. And that will tell you what opportunities, roadblocks, challenges, et cetera, that are going on for you now, okay? And by knowing where the planets are and how fast they move, that's the astrologer's job, is um, then you can uh, get an idea of how long this transit is gonna take. You know, for instance, Mercury is the fastest moving. Well, the moon is the fastest moving. Every two and a half days, the moon changes signs. And the moon has to do with the ebb and flow of water and emotion. And it's our uh, satellite to the earth. So the tides come in and the tides go out. It's like a fad. It's like everybody's talking about this today, but tomorrow they're not going to be because the moon will be in a different sign. Okay, but the Pluto has been in Capricorn for what, nine years now? It's gonna be there for another three and a half. We're, we're over this already. You know, Pluto in Capricorn has been really difficult, but he is the furthest out planet and moves a lot slower. Okay, so the transits and progressions together can help you with timing. So you can make better choices in your life about how to make goals. And I have an example here for, um, so this is, I call this unknown person. This is their birth chart. And the chart over here, let me get you guys in the middle so it's not blocked. Um, this is the, uh, it says unknown person, secondary progressions, okay? 
this is having moved these planets from their date of birth, which on the um, upper left, you can see this person was born in Boston, Mass. at 8.24 AM on August 13th, 1997. Now, I cast it for tonight, the progressions. And um, so 97, I didn't do the math on that. How old are they now? Um, uh, let's see. So they are. My daughter uh, was born in 1998 and she's 22. Yeah, this person is, um, thank you. <laughs> this person <laughs> is 20, uh, 24, actually uh, almost 24. They're 23 point something. So 23 days after the person was born, the planets had moved this much. And so it that um, is all taken into an account. And you can see there's a lot less activity in the center of the wheel of the progress chart. There's a lot less going on because the orb has to be exact within one degree. So they were born at with their son over here at in the um, chart on the lower left at 20 degrees of Leo, there's the sun, the circle with a little dot in the center. When we come up here to the chart on the upper right, the sun is at uh, 13 degrees of Virgo in 37 minutes. So it means that the sun had already moved through um, all the, the last 10 degrees of Leo and into the first almost 14 degrees of Virgo. And this will show me where the person is coming from now. This is just an example to show you that the charts are not the same. Now, if we take, whoops, shoot, did I get through? I don't have my triple wheel, I guess. No, I don't, I had a triple wheel. All right, anyway, I think that that's enough information. Um, I'm going to take any questions now. Um, question, Q and A, anybody have any questions? Any, I see some other people have, Join yeah, and you can go ahead and just unmute yourself. We're a small group, so yeah. go ahead and unmute well, yourself. Anybody? Yep. And let's see. I see Jackie's left, but Mary's here. Mary, do you have anything you'd like to say? Unmute yourself if you want to ask any questions. Hi. Hi there. I, I'm thinking, I'm afraid I came in late because I was at an, a previous meeting I had. So unfortunately, this night is everything's happening at one time. That, that always is the way on this island, yes. Yeah. So um, I'll just be thinking, really. So I don't have any questions okay. now. Okay. No, right, basically, I was just doing this as a presentation for what astrology can and cannot um, tell you. And I'm going to go back to this chart that I really like right... Whoops. Where did it go? Right here. Can, can you see this one, Mary? Yes, I can. Yeah. So basically, this is what, how I think of as astrology as a tool, how it can be used. It's a navigational tool. It helps you just to uh, chart your course in life. Everybody's roadmap is different depending on the time, date, and place of their birth. And earlier, Shelly asked a good question about knowing the time. And, and if you don't know the time, how can you get it? And there's a couple of ways to do that through rectifying the chart or, um, which is, involves a lot of questions and answering and casting charts to see what the rising sign is and how that suits the person more. Or I douse with a pendulum. I've been using a pendulum for a long time to um, find answers to things. And um, the, the pendulum, I don't use it in my daily life. I only use it for uh, finding birth times or, um, certain other things but um the uh finding the birth time is pretty crucial to understanding um where you're at now and what's going on it would have a big effect on your progress chart but um for the transits um and uh any comparison charts i forgot to say too when i was talking about the different kinds of astrology here uh where was that back here. Um, it, I said that um, horoscopes can be drawn up for the start dates of things. Um, there are also charts can be done for um, relationships. 
uh, com they're called composite charts. There are a couple of different kinds that the astrology can pick from to use. And what it involves is taking two people's charts and it could be any relationship, uh, father and um, son, uh, husband and wife, mother and child, uh, boss and, and employee. If you want to know how the, what the effect is of working with that person or, you know, what, say they're having some kind of um, issue and they want to know how best to work it out. You can cast charts for the, the two people and then the composite chart, which basically is taking their two charts and making a midpoint and, and then the chart uh, will be the relationship chart. And then the transits to that will show what's going on and where, the, where they have the opportunity to uh, work on those issues. It's fascinating. It is. <laughs> yeah. I have kind of a, just a general question because you've sure. been doing this so long, Suzanne. Just, I'm curious how views on astrology have changed in the decades that you've been doing it. Okay. So when I first started in the, um, so I was aware of astrology in the seventies and, but I didn't start studying it in earnest until the eighties. And, um, and then I started practicing it in the early 90s, because I never thought I was going to be good enough. I have a Virgo moon. I have Saturn, Mars, and the moon in Virgo. I was too picky, and I thought I had to be perfect, or I couldn't do it. Uh, that, you know, until a friend of mine came and, and handed me $25 and said, I just paid you, you're doing a reading for me. And I was horrified. And I said, oh, okay. So my, what's changed is that the time in the 70s and 80s, mostly, you know, 60s and 70s, there was a lot of interest in, um, in astrology back then. I think it died out a little bit in, but not a lot, but it did die out a little in the um, late 90s and early uh, 2000s. Now, since... I don't know since when, but there's, it's a huge resurgence right now in astrology. Everybody wants answers to things and everybody is becoming aware of the fact that there are other ways of knowing. And one of the biggest things that um, if you follow astrology at all, you'll hear about is the fact that Jupiter, the planet of expansion, education, learning, travel, looking at the bigger picture has moved into the sign of Aquarius. Jupiter um, has a 12 year orbit around the sun. So it spends about a year in a sign. Well, when it was in Capricorn, which is responsibility, business, it's a very serious sign. It's Saturn ruled. Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, and the South Node were all in Capricorn um, for uh, two years ago. It was very difficult. Then last December, Jupiter and Saturn both moved into Aquarius and they joined together. This is what we call a great conjunction. And astrology is ruled by or found in the field of um, Aquarian studies and energy. And um, so uh, there is a, a huge resurgence in the last couple of years in coming up knowing that this was going to happen. Saturn will stay in Aquarius longer than Jupiter will because he stays in a sign for three years and goes retrograde a little bit longer. So about so Saturn responsibility focus is going to be on groups and how we connect. You know, and Does that have anything the, to do with the change in um, politics in the White House and like they, well, yeah, I, I'm not going to get political. I'm just trying to say no, that. no, no. But, but I is will that, say like now we are more, go ahead. Yeah. Um, let's, let me just say without getting too political either that, um, that Aquarius has more to do with the group and what's it, uh, in the best interest of everybody. If Capricorn, the, where Pluto is now, it is breaking down systems that don't work. Capricorn is structure. Pluto was in Capricorn when the United States became the United States 248 years ago. I mean, 240 years ago. And, and 
and what's happening is that um, Pluto is breaking down outdated, outmoded um, uh, governments and uh, not just the United States, all, all around the world and, um, and uh, financial institutions that aren't working. With Pluto going to be moving into Aquarius in 2024, and Saturn and Jupiter are sort of paving the way, getting ready. Aquarius is more concerned about new ideas, new ways of looking at things, brainstorming, science, technology, thinking outside of the box. Capricorn has been, is only interested in the status quo and maintaining the structures. But when the structures no longer work and Pluto comes along and stays a long time in Capricorn, it breaks down those structures. And then we all have to come together and brainstorm and figure out how to make things work. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. So yes, it had something to do with what's right. going on. I mean, I think that we're, whether we realize it or not, whether we're tuned into what you're teaching us and what other people are teaching us, we're guided and we're directed whether we realize it or not. And so we all brought ourselves to a certain point. Well, I, I believe that earth is a school. We come here for our soul's growth. We do it over and over in many lifetimes and that we all pick uh, what we wanna learn. And um, everybody has choice and everybody has free will. Are you gonna follow your roadmap? that's up to you you know you have a roadmap that you your higher self your soul picked in this lifetime so you you know hopefully if you get on board with the where you're going then it's easier to navigate um let me just put this here we go see i love this little i forget where i got it some some open source thing a long time ago look at these it reminded me of the owl and the pussycat went to see but it's a duck and I can't tell what the other thing is. You know, a chicken. Looks like a duck and a chicken. They're out there in a little sailboat at night, starry, starry night, the way on the, and I just love this illustration. And, you know, they don't know where they're going, you know, they're just out there, gonna, you know, but can they control? Yeah, they can. They've got, they can control the, the uh, sails, you know, go with the wind. They probably have a tiller, you know, <coughs> And, and your chart gives you your, your rudder and your control of your sails, how you're going to go. And you can, you know, I always tell people it, that if I give you a reading and I'm going to tell you, you know, it's going to rain for, um, you know, six weeks, it's your choice if you're going to go out with, that, with an umbrella. I'm just metaphorically cosmic weather, but, um, you know, timing is everything. And in astrology, you can see the timing of things. Now I have put on my, my contact page here, you'll see it says um, pathwaysofthesoul.org. I haven't finished this website yet. It's new, it will be up and running pretty soon. But I have this ongoing log, um, pathwaysofthesoul.blogspot.com. I've been writing that blog for 12 years. Usually it's just new moon and full moon. And if people want to sign up for my newsletter, they can always um, email me at suzannekeating3 at gmail.com. And then you will get my newsletter, which is more informative, tells when I'm teaching classes and also, um, you know, speaking or whatever. And um, uh, if you want to set up an appointment or anything, please feel free to call me. I and actually I have, I have one more question. Um, sure. Just like kind of a practical question. I'm someone who likes to be prepared. I guess yeah. it's Victorian in me. And I, um, I'm i just curious, like if someone were to call you and I'm booking an appointment, what are, you've talked about like, these are the questions I can't answer. These are the questions I can't answer. Like what, what are a few things people could do to kind of prep or just think about before they show up for you? Um, I always ask them when they call, first of all, how did you hear about me? You know, if it was a referral, if they read my blog, if they saw something, uh, you know, posted on, I do have a, a Facebook page for my blogs. Um, and they tell me, and most of the time lately, I with referral after referral after referral. This winter has been really big on astrology. And I'll say, so what, why is it you're interested in, in what is it you're interested in um, talking about? Um, and they'll say, well, you know, I 
I had a reading 25 years ago and I want to, you know, I want to um, see what's changed, you know, that kind of thing. Or there's really not a lot of preparation that they have to do. They know why they're coming to see me. And um, I will ask them, um, is there any specific thing you want me to look at? And uh, my returning clients who come once a year for their updates or whatever, um, some check in twice a year and then some every two or three years, you know, wh whatever it is, the person comes when they're meant to come. I, I don't have any control over that. Um, and one of the things that I say to them is that, um, you, you know, I will look at, your transits and progressions to your chart. And then if you have any quite if, you know, during the course of the reading, if anything comes up that I, or you have a question, you want more information on, just let me know. And I have to tell you that it's amazing, but a lot of the times people will say, no, you touched on everything I wanted to ask. You brought up it because they're living their life. And really what a good astrology reading should do is just validate that, they're, that they are aware of, the, of where they're at now and what the possibilities are or the timing. That's the whole thing that a lot of people come to an astrologer for. They, they wanna know when is this cycle gonna end or when is the new one gonna begin? Or is this a good time for me to start dating again? I've been you know, divorced for you know, four years or whatever you know people all they always have their agenda and it will come out in the course of the of the reading i don't know if that answers your question or not janet yeah yeah it does that's great okay okay yeah mm -hmm. actually i did have another question to, or something i thought of is sure. that um I, I people have talked to me there's a different kind of astrology and they have different um it's on a different time frame. So typically I'm a Virgo. Uh -huh. I'm in this other astrology, I'm not. What other astrology are you speaking of? Um, it's on a different access or something. And I don't know. Exactly. Is it, are you talking about Vedic astrology, Eastern astrology? I, I, maybe, yes. Well, so there's Western astrology and then there is Eastern astrology or Vedic. Um, and they, they still use the same uh, signs of the Zodiac. That doesn't change. Um, there, was a t there is something that happens about every three years where um, scientific um, people, astro uh, not astrologers, astronomers will trot out this thing and say, there's a 13th sign, Ophiuchus. And it's a constellation where the, the foot of this um, constellation is in the zodiac belt which goes around the um that we see from the earth at 23 and a half degrees looking out well the 12 signs of the zodiac that fit in there are the ones that the planets always move through from our position on earth ophiocus just has his foot in there are we aware that it's there? Yes, we are. Does it count in astrology? No, it does not. Astrology is already um uses all the scientific data from the jet propulsion labs for where the planets are in what signs. We use the same exact information that NASA uses, only we've already adapted for something called the precession of the equinoxes. Therefore, um, sometimes this, uh, when the, um, there'll be uh, the planets in the sky right now, astronomically can be in a different sign. They'll be ahead of where or behind where the astrology says it is. But we've, that's because the, it's already built in to allow for this procession of the equinoxes. It's a little too scientific for me, but I know that it works. So I don't, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. You'll be a different sign, but you won't be a different sign in Western astrology. Okay, that must've been it because I, uh... August 24th is my birthday, so I've been a Virgo for all those years. You are a Virgo, yeah. August 24th, you know, you couldn't even, you know, uh, unless you were born, you know, several hundred years ago, you, you couldn't be a, a, nothing moves that fast in the sky to change that, um, where the, 
where Leo was in Virgo, you know? Okay. Yeah. So oh, you good. might have, you might have planets in Leo uh, because the sun, uh, Mercury and Venus are usually very close together in the sky, except when Mercury or Venus is retrograde, they can be two signs away from the sun, but normally they're within um, 30 degrees of each other. And um, so you could have, you could have uh, something in Leo and you could have uh, three things in, in Virgo. It, it just depends. And then of course the other planets that take longer to go around the sun are gonna be in different constellations. Okay. or different signs <laughs> okay. okay all right thank you thank you very much you're welcome all right thank you all um and if you have any questions feel free to email me okay thanks, thanks suzanne this is great yeah oh, good boy i wish i was right. in the beginning